And we're back with some more oxygen not included. And today it's going to be going straight for space. Namely because we have all the research done in that section except for, well, all the space stuff. Which means we gotta make a steam engine. It's been a long while. Though the first things first, we gotta let some people out of the, uh, the training area. Namely, Jack Died, who's got 20 athletics and 20 machinery. And Paddy Wagon, who's got 20... Wait, how, how do you have 25 athletics? Oh, looks like he's sparkle flattered. Okay, that's a plus five. But his base athletics is, is 20. That means, well, they're actually some of the fastest dupes we've got. Even Chili Peeps, one of our originals, has only had 14. Uh, Extron's actually 28. No, they, they went through the training. So we need to let them out right now, which means we got to skill, scr skill scrub them. I think I tried to say skull scrub them, but I suppose that's close enough. We are scrubbing the skills out of their skull. All right, that's paddy wagon done. That's both of them completed. So, let's see what skills you're getting. Well, obviously, construction for you, improved carry, suit sustainability, exosuit training, and... Done? Yeah, we'll leave you just like that for now. Give them a demolition hat, and off they go. Do you want to turn them into a mechatronics engineer? No, you know what? We've got other specialized people. I'm keeping everyone's morale requirements low, because I'm a little bit paranoid about people. Ooh, you've got plenty of skills. Nope, nope, nope. It's paddy wagon we're dealing with. Uh, yep, same again for you. You're going into exercise training, but you're going to go straight into mechatronics. And me mechatronics engineer. We have four mechatronics engineers, so I think we're good on that front. I've already changed their priorities, so they should be good to go. Jack Died is going to be doing building primarily, side and digging, and then everything else. And paddy wagon, straight into operating, and then building and digging on the side. It's just because mechatronics engineers can build conveyor rails and things like that. You want to make sure that they can do building as well when they're not busy operating these things. Uh, that means they should be super quick about doing all of those operations now. All right. Time to go to the top of the map. Let's build up towards space. Uh, have we hit the top yet? Huh. No, we have not hit the top yet. Uh, this might take another minute or so. Space is looking kind of green nowadays, whatever they've done to the background colors. Uh, but we have, we have no radiation. We didn't install the Spaced Out DLC or didn't use the Spaced Out DLC just to simplify things. And since there's no radiation, we don't have to care up here. It's just light is the only thing that's going to be a problem. Anyway, uh, it's been a while since I've done, well, rockets on the base map. And what we want to do is leave about three tiles for regolith collection or ice collection. And then we're going to want to have 55 tiles of space to put our rockets in if you want to get to maximum size. So, yeah, that turns out to be exactly here. Uh, I didn't plan that, but that is absolutely perfect. That means if we dig across here, that will put us at 55 tiles height, which means we can fit in the maximum size rockets when the time comes. Uh, but first, I want to put a storage bin full of steel and a storage bin full of obsidian here. We want to make our ladders out of obsidian, and then we're going to want to put steel for all of the, the tiles across the top. We want to make those storage bins there, though, so that they're a shorter travel distance. We want people to be bringing along one or two tons at a time, as opposed to just a few bricks at a time. And down here, hmm, I think what we want to do is probably dig across and take all of this out, though I think we probably want to cover the top first. We want to cover the top so that no one's going to get trapped out here, but all of these trees are all going to get demolished, unfortunately. This next thing is, is uh, it's a bit of a me thing. I want to put down these uh, rocket modules, or wait, Bunker doors. I want to put bunker doors across the top here. Now, normal people would just start laying bunker doors. Well, actually, we want them right about there. So normal people just start laying bunker doors. The problem is it won't line up perfectly with the edge of the map. I need to know where the edge of the map is first, and the first bunker door needs to line up perfectly with the edge of the map, and then come back. It's just otherwise we're going to end up with it being an odd or even way at the end of it, and I just wouldn't like that. So instead, we're going to, well, go all the way across to the edge of the map. I should probably be like, measure it from here but I'd prefer to, well, do it across the top. So that means we are going to build the ladders the whole way across, and then once we figure out where the edge of the map is, then we can start lining up our bunker doors and building them. Until that point, dupes are going to have to worry about the odd meteor shower coming down and making making their building job just that little bit more interesting. And there we go. There's the edge of the map, which means we can start laying down bunker tiles. Well, bunker doors. Right up against the edge. And then we'll just rotate them all the way out. Where would they line up? Yeah, see, we would have been off by a couple of tiles. Totally worth the wait. Totally worth it. I was just about to get stuck into the rockets, and there was a minor distraction that showed up. Uh, basically, there's no carbon dioxide in here. The reason I noticed was uh, these plants are stifled. We need that carbon dioxide to keep these plants growing. We do have a bunch of carbon dioxide we've been getting out here from making ethanol. 
but I think what I want to do is expand this container out just a little bit. Now that this is actually dormant at the moment, we can maybe chop out a bigger chunk of this just to give us more space to store gas when this becomes active, which it will again in six cycles. While doing this, we've gotten ourselves a new printable available, and it kind of reminded me we don't have a doctor on site. Uh, medicine is one of the few things we haven't got into. I mean, I won't go with yokel again. I made a mistake getting a yokel before. I think that's actually quite a big negative. Uh, I'll show you in a second. Gastrophobia over here is fine, handy construction, but they've got medicine, creative, and athletics for suit wearing. The suit wearing, I would prefer if it was suit wearing, tidying, and doctoring, but you know what? You'll do. Please welcome Eric L to the team. Eric L. Dot. Well, Eric L, you can go straight into, well, training. And they should immediately wander up and... Yeah, look at the speed of them. They are... Like, that's why you gotta gym them. There's just no way. And I forgot to give them a coat. Good thing I kept an eyeball on them. Hey, we'll give a warm coat to them first, Eric L. Sorry about that. But once they've got a coat on, they can go right back to training. Uh, the reason I'm going to avoid that uh, the trait of yokel, they can't get these. Basically, advanced research plus two, field research plus two, and astronomy plus two. This gives them a learning bonus, which means they learn stuff faster. Justin here was hired after pa or before Paddywagon, yet Paddywagon is already maxed at athletics and machinery, and Justin is still only at 15 athletics. That's just, it's so much slower. If they've got the ability to get three points in this, it gives them plus six to science, and they learn stuff 60% faster, and they're just finished in training so much quicker. All right, uh, you guys get around to that. We are going to go over here and finish this off real quick. I was trying to core this out from the inside, then I realized there was slime there. Yeah, I can't really dig out the slime and let that carbon that in there. It'd mess with our carbon dioxide seal. That should allow us to store twice as much carbon dioxide for the next round of eruptions, which will happen in two and a half cycles. However, I, I do kind of want to top it up now, and over here, I've chucked in a quick gas pump. This is submerged in a lot of carbon dioxide. There's loads of carbon dioxide around here because well, we're producing ethanol. Ethanol distilleries are spitting out about 300 plus grams of carbon dioxide a second. So we're taking that carbon dioxide and pumping it over there. Once we've finished filling that over there, or well, once that's stabilized, I'm going to take all the carbon dioxide and start pumping it down to the oil bomb. We have a bunch of slicksters down here that could totally use it. Though I might want to get rid of the natural gas out of there first. Uh, I'd really love to clean up all the gases on the map, but no, no, I'm getting distracted. I need to get back to putting in a rocket silo right here. Oh, and if you're curious, hot polluted oxygen vent, so, um, yeah, still no use for those. Back in the olden days, building rockets was so painful because you had to build the bottom bit and then you couldn't build anything on top of it until it was completed. But at some point it got patched and now you can just go, let's say, give me, ooh, I think we're going to want about seven of these if my notes are correct. Yeah, give me a second. Yeah, seven research modules. We could get by with six, but I, I used to go with seven back in the day because it was easier to transform into a petroleum rocket. Oh, oh, actually, yeah, we should pump up some petroleum here to act as a coolant. We're going to need to generate a bunch of steam. And right now it's, um, it's not very steamy up here. Not even a little bit. I wonder if we have any vents or geysers around here that might help with that. Looking around, we don't have any hot geysers anywhere nearby, so I think we're just going to have to throw in an aqua tuner and use the aqua tuner to clear this area. At, well, to heat up the steam necessary to run the steam engine. And why are you not building? Oh, there is missing tiles on the edge. Forgotten these things need an actual... Back in the olden days, before the introduction of Spaced Out, and they, they put in a rocket base, so you have to build a rocket base before you can build anything on top of it. I forgot you actually need to build these steam engines on top of something. And once it's built, you can remove the, the basing, but before that, nope, nothing you can do. Alright, uh, do you guys want to finish those stairs out? Otherwise, poor Extradon's going to be trapped down there. I changed my mind. I was, I was going to build this heating area down here, and I thought, why? Just build it up here instead. It puts it in the vacuum of space. We don't have to worry about disposal later on. It'll just be cleaner and faster. Why dig in here? No, I'm just, uh, I was making things harder on myself for no reason. You can just uh, put a ladder across there, and instead we'll put it in the build right here. Plan here, simplicity itself. We are going to dump a bunch of petroleum in here to act as a cold sink, and then we're going to dump some water in here that we're going to heat up with this aqua tuner by t mill. The aqua tuner will get hot, the petroleum will get cold, the water will turn to steam, pump the steam into the steam engine, and that should be that. We just have to, well, put in enough water first, load it up with coolant, get the petroleum from the bottom of the map, and to get the petroleum from the bottom of the map, well, we're running an insulated pipe all the way up, because we don't want cold petroleum. Cold petroleum would be bad, so we want the hot stuff. Fortunately, this stuff's been in the pipe for a while, so could be a problem, but I think this stuff in the tank is at 67.8 degrees. 
So that should be sufficient for our needs. We just gotta hook you up there. And then that should all start moving. Up, up, up. Uh, keep going, and there's a few more pieces that need to go in here. And then it can start getting dumped into this section. Now, for coolant to go through the aquatuner, we're just going to want to get some, well, water, actually. Hmm, when I think about it, we can just dump water in here and then pump that water into the coolant loop. That would actually be kind of efficient. Well, getting this ready, I was about to look at the star map, but I realized I, I can't. I need to put down a telescope first. We have not put down a telescope yet. Ah, uh, that is very sloppy of me. Okay, and at least they now have that little arrow thing that tells you, or they, they, they show you where it should be, so, or they show the view radius of it. That didn't exist back in the olden days. So we'll put you about there. We are going to have to, damn it. I we're going to have to put power and all sorts of stuff in here. So you know what? You need to go. We're going to have to run power from the bottom of the map. This is going to need power, and we might as well put it on our main spine. So give me a minute. We're also going to need to run oxygen into this. Oh, damn. I had forgotten how annoying it was to get a telescope up and running. That's okay. That's okay. We've got lots of oxalite. In fact, how is our oxalite production looking now that we've got CO2 back? Ah, there we go. I did have to replace these vents with high-pressure vents. And do we have... Yeah, we do have carbon dioxide flowing consistently. The whole area is fully saturated and crop production is back up to full speed. And you are looking perfect. Oh, and I forgot to disconnect this guy. We can disconnect you. The rest of this will go down to the oil biome later. But for now, that worked out wonderfully at getting that back up and running. You, what do we got? I think I'll just take the barbecue. I'd never take... Uh, I've done narcoleptics once, never again. They're just, they, they level so much slower, it's annoying. Uh, shabby dresser and all that is fine, but creative construction agriculture, they don't have anything that really screams out to me. So we'll just take the barbecue, we'll stick that into storage. And this is looking, yeah, we'll actually let that petroleum go up just one more level. I was trying to think of how do we get oxygen into this telescope? But then, uh, like, there's a few ways we could do it. The main way we're doing it down here, let's say, is we have a conveyor loader. We load oxalites into the conveyor loader and that goes through here and, well, oxalites the whole area so that we can pump it with the gas pumps. Now, this is rather large and we want something rather small up here. This is only going to have to support one duplicate inside this telescope. They still need oxygen even if they're wearing atmosuit, uh, or atmosuits, as far as I recall, unless they've changed that. So my second thought was, what if we just get a conveyor loader. We put a conveyor loader in here, let's say, and then we flood it. Because if we don't flood it, any, like, we need someone to be able to re keep refilling the oxalite in this. If we don't keep refilling the oxalite, eventually we're going to run out of oxygen and, you know, the person using the telescope will start to suffocate. So we put a conveyor loader in here, we load it up with oxalite, but then we submerge it into a liquid so that the oxalite can't off-gas. That way we can still get in and out. But then I thought, wait, no, no, what, I'm, I'm thinking about this way too hard. So instead what we're going to do is, what, damn it, they got rid of the ethanol. One second. What we have done here is we've grabbed little blobs of ethanol we found lying about the place, and all we're going to do is we're going to empty them on these tiles. All we need to do is make a, a bit of a liquid lock. We're going to make a mini one. This will seal in this area. Then this year we're going to fill with oxide. The oxide will off-gas in this room. It'll fill it up for the gas pump. And a little bit of a spillage, but that's fine. Done. And then... Give me oxalite, make it five tons. And then once we've got five tons, it will reduce it to like two and a half tons. So that way, the for the first two and a half tons, no one will have to come back and stock it back up again. And we shouldn't need to have someone in it for that long. Now, does that give us a star map? Yes, it does. I would like you to analyze that object, then we'll analyze the other. I really should have started on these a while ago. How are we looking down here? Uh, this is probably full enough, I think. Yeah. Well, we're almost done on this, and I've, I've turned it off down below. It'll take a while for that to top up. Uh, Oxygen-wise, gas is coming in nicely from the storage bin, which is still not fully stocked with oxalate, but soon enough. And none of that gas can escape. If we check the gas overlay, yep, can't get past this liquid blob, plus there's more liquid blobs to stop it, just in case anything goes wrong. And there's plenty of pressure in there, and that should off-gas fast enough. And over here, actually, we can empty that water out. We'll empty that, and then we'll sweep up this area and put in a couple of steel gas pumps. That's a steel... Oh, for a second there, I was like, did I make that aquatune out of steel or not? And there goes Mike. Mike was scanning planets. Uh, how are they doing? Actually, never mind. I've already scanned the first one. Analyze that next one, Mike. Uh, where are you going? Going to research. Nope, 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 nope. Stop there for one second. Yeah, excellent. That'll get us the first two planets. They can plow through the rest of them pretty quickly. I mean, 
What? Fourteen percent complete? How? You just looked at it. Twenty-five percent complete. Damn, they are fast. I wish you could queue them up. Uh, uh, we are just about ready to seal this up. We just gotta put in some automation wires. All we have to do now is hook up this little abomination. Uh, all it does is the water passes through here. It's chilled down by 14 degrees, comes out the other side and passes through the petroleum. The petroleum stops it from going so cold it freezes. And what it does is it heats up the water in here. Eventually the water in here will turn to steam. Well, that's the plan. Unless the petroleum gets too cold. And then... Actually, yeah, with the water freezing the pipe... You know what? Not gonna worry about it. We'll probably be fine. We're just trying to prevent the water that's going through here from freezing. Now it's coming out at 47. And there's a gap in the pipes. Ah, it's fine. It'll just take a little bit longer to get going. Now, we've also turned off the gas pumps. We don't want them running just yet. We want to make sure this stuff hits about 120 degrees. Once the temperature in here is 120 degrees, then we won't care. Uh, for now, we're just going to skip forward time a bit while that carries itself out. What's the temperature of that petroleum? Uh, actually, petroleum is 51 degrees right there. We'll see what temperature it is when we come back. There we go. It's all getting a little bit steamy in there. We'll be up to minus 20, or we're down to 27 degrees here. The water's fine, right? It's not coming out too cold. Well, it hasn't frozen in the pipes yet, which is a good sign, but it's down to 6 degrees. Yeah, that actually was a little bit tighter than I would like to. Maybe should have used polluted water in the uh, the cooling loop, or use that new stuff we've got, the nectar. Yeah, that might have been a smart idea, but hey, it worked out. Tight, but close enough. Alright, once this hits about 120, uh, assuming we don't get too cold. Once Okay, once this hits 0 degrees, or this hits 120. See, I put water goes to 0 degrees, we'll turn this off, or... If this hits 120, one or the other. Temperature achieve. We're at 120 degrees in here, and please ignore the liquid tepidizer. Uh, it doesn't exist. Right, we've got insulated igneous rock pipes. I would have preferred ceramic, but coal is a bit of a problem on this map. I think we just have to breed hatches just to make ceramic. You can't make ceramic with clay and wood. You need coal. Actually, can you turn wood into coal, maybe? Like, oh yeah, over here, you can only make ceramic out of coal and clay. You can make refined carbon out of coal or wood, but there's no other way to make ceramic as far as I can see. Oh well, uh, let's start pumping this stuff and hopefully it doesn't smash the pipes. We have already set this to 763 degrees. Using the ancient and weird arts, we've managed to figure out exactly how much gas we're going to need to get there. I don't think there's any way for it to tell you, is there? Nope, not seeing it. And you, can you actually... No, there's no way to get this to actually target a planet just yet, is there? I think we have to put in a do- oh yeah, we're gonna have to train someone up to go into that. Well, never mind, we'll worry about that in a minute. For now, we're gonna turn this on. Uh, it's making it. Gets a little bit chilly. 118. Yeah, no, no, that's fine. Perfect. And I've even put in a gas vent here. Once this has filled the rocket, we're gonna cut it off, and then we're just gonna pump the gas in, uh, well, the excess gas in the piping, we're just gonna let that vent into space. Otherwise, while we're waiting for the rocket to come back, it will definitely phase change in the pipes and break everything. All right, while that's going on, we need to find a duplicate that's going to hop into the rocket. I completely forgot to choose a rocket duplicant. We should probably get one. No, none of these are gonna fit the bill. Oh, look at that one. A skilled mechatronics engineer that comes with tidying, building, and digging. They'd make a great all-round build digger mechatronics, but, uh, no, no, I think we're good. We, we're kind of swimming in all of those. Skills-wise, I was thinking paddy wagon. Thing is, they've got suit wearing, which gives them a bonus to rocket navigation, which, uh, like, the only thing they're going to be trained in is science, improved carry, and all the, su the suit ones all the way up to there. So I think we scrub paddy wagon and stick them in a rocket, which is a bit of a waste. They're super fast, super efficient, really well done. But no one else really has that suit. To, well, they don't really have the necessary stats in either science or suits. Our next best choice is probably Mike, but they're our, they're our science person. Like, what's their science at? 22? Yeah, no, we, we, we don't want them doing it. I suppose Literate Bass could do it, but they're a rancher and we only have one of those. Maybe we should invest in a second one. Never mind, Patty. Uh, you're going into the skill scrubber, mate. Okay, Patty, you're just about... Yeah, there you go. Good face plant. And why is the game hanging? All right, done. You, we need to set your skills up correctly, which will be very simply this, 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 uh, all three of these, right into rocket wearing and not rocket navigation, plus 10% to piloting. You know what? Why not? That's, that puts him at 21 morale requirements. Ouch. Uh, we're going to have to change our priorities as well. Now, it's been a while, but operating, it seems, is space missions 
which is kind of what we want to max out on. So, great. Uh, we're going to chuck you into the rocket. The thing about that is, in these olden times, uh, dupes that go inside a rocket just sort of disappear. Uh, not disappear, they, they come back whenever you want them, but basically they don't have any requirements. No oxygen, no food, no nothing. They just sit in there in stasis. Yes, yeah, stasis is a better term. And how are we looking down here? We're at 300 kgs of steam. We got another 68 kgs per tile. Yeah, we should be able to get two rockets out of it. And that's all we need. Just two rockets, then we can switch right over to petroleum. And that is 763 kilos of steam. Right, uh... Don't want that stuff breaking the pipes. Give me... There you go. You can back out, get dumped into space. Perfect. Now, we've started the door opening procedure. That's sending a red signal. Damn it, no, send a green signal. I have forgotten to do something here, haven't I? I forgot to hook that up. Oh, great, I forgot this is going to take like about half a year to open these doors. Unpowered bunker doors, the slowest doors in existence. Well, the timing of that meteor shower is a bit trash. I mean, I close the doors, but by the time it's done, the, the meteor shower will be gone. You know what? Uh, get me... Paddy wagon. Actually, wait. No. First, get Paddy Wagon a proper helmet. Yeah, rocket navigation? Yeah, I think rocket navigation is the one. And once they've got their ra rocket navigation helmet on, I mean, once they wake up, come on, Paddy, gonna move on. Can you actually get to it? Huh. No. Right. I see the problem here. We haven't put in one of the, like, it, have they changed this? It used to be the only way to get in was with the gantry, but I'm pretty sure the more well, in the spaced out, you no longer needed it. But uh, they haven't actually modified the base game. This is weird. It's like a sort of a weird nostalgia half memory thing going on here. Where I'm trying to remember what I used to do years ago, back before they put in the expansion. The expansion changed a lot of things for the better. I know it didn't. The expansion actually rated really poorly. The, the spaced out one. If you go look up its reviews, it's not nearly as good as the base game, but. The expansion actually added a lot of nice features and was pretty good all around. And Paddy Wagon is assigned, and they should be on their way here now. Yep, it is currently Paddy Wagon's Aaron, and they are on their way, and boom. You know what? Let's uh, deconstruct this because I know that the moment we launch this, this thing's gonna. Um, yeah, it's gonna fry the. What are you doing? Deliver one Atmos suit? Huh. Forgotten about that. No destination selected and destination set. Now, do you do that by clicking on the bottom of the rocket, or do we have to do it through the star map? Dear God, it's been so long. It's been literally years. Yeah, I think we got to do this through the star map. So, we select... Uh, do we have to select rocket, then select destination? Rocket status, selected. Okay, so this is the rocket right here. We select here, or here. Weight penalty. Total thrust, total range. Ah, so our total range is 10,000 kilometers, and this is the 10,000 kilometer range, then there's 20, 30, 40. The steam rocket can only go to 10, unless you give it some boosters and stuff. We're not going to bother doing that. One thing to note, these are the five bonus study things we want to get, get, and these two things down here, these things could be unique materials, or will be unique materials. It might be abyssalite or something, but they might be the good stuff. So we're hoping to get those, and once we knock out that study and that study, I think it starts from the top, works its way down, but we're going to get all the money out. We're going to wipe all of these out and grab all of the... Uh, available stuff. We want to launch the mission? Are you... Yeah, here we go. Now, one thing to note, these rockets have an exhaust that is 3x9 tiles, that is completely magical and goes through everything, same as in Spaced Out. We don't want to deal with that, so we basically just walled it into igneous rock tiles. These igneous rock tiles are going to get a little bit warm, temperature is going to go for them, but not nearly as bad as we hadn't done that. Uh, you, we can close that. We could put in something for opening the doors when they come back. Um, actually... Oh, I'll just leave the doors open. I think the round trip on this is tiny anyway. 2.7 cycles? Yeah. They'll be... I mean, we already just had a meteor shower. It's probably fine. How's you looking? Still minus 57. Loads of random water and stuff appearing. Yeah, be grand. Anyway, that will get us started on this research down here. The interstellar research. Once that comes in... Once we... The, those, we're going to launch this rocket, launch this a second time, and then we should have enough to knock out all the way to petroleum. And once we've got all of that, we're golden. And you need to be dug out so that we can get right back to researching more planets. We want to knock out as many of them as we can. While that rocket is off doing its thing, i got to do some tidying up down below. Namely, I want to get the natural gas out of here. I want to force all this natural gas out of here and 
I let it float up or whatever, and I want to fill this whole area with as much carbon dioxide as possible. Right now, we're pumping carbon dioxide down from up here, and I figure if we can get most of the carbon dioxide down, that'll force all of the natural gas and stuff up. So over here, we're just walling areas in to force the natural gas along, improving airflow by putting in some mesh tiles, and in no time at all, hopefully we should have most of this out of here and the whole area full of carbon dioxide. You could also just put in a gas pump and start pumping it out, but that seems like like slightly more effort. Turns out I was willing to put in the effort. It was just taking too long. So that should start draining all of the natural gas out of there and sticking it into that tank. Uh, I just got to keep an eye on that for a minute or so. And the rocket is currently 63% complete. And it has told us nothing about... The, yeah, it won't tell us anything about the planet until it gets back. Damn it, I was so busy down here cleaning out spores, I missed the rocket landing. Ugh first return rocket and didn't even notice. Now, it's going to drop out a bunch of data banks. Oh, an ancient tech. I'd forgotten about this. It drops out, uh, oh, things you can put on pedestals. Artifact type things. Nice. Now, there was a thing in the expansion that removed neutronium from stuff, but I don't think these ones even come with that. Cool. Mike is now using that data to examine the cosmos or something. Still a damn cool animation. That should knock out this researcher, at least get started on it. And if we look on the star map right now, this planet, study upper atmosphere, check, study lower, blah, 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 all of those stuff are done. Each one of those gave us 50 research points, plus we got an extra 70 points because we had 10 points for each of those research modules we had on it. And this place has isoresin, which is good, actually. 11% isoresin? You will be coming back for you. And... Oh, yeah, these are the artifacts you can get. That's what we're bringing back. Artifacts. We're already one, two, and three possibilities, and a 50% chance of nothing. Next up, we're going to load up that rocket and head over here. That should give us all we need to switch straight to petroleum. Well, Paddy Wagon is still on board. They've never gotten out. They haven't eaten, used the bathroom, or done anything. The thing is, the moment we take them out, they lose all their morale. Oh, they don't actually have any morale right now. In fact, if we check under scheduling, they shouldn't even exist. Priorities. Paddy Wagon, you see they're greyed out. So effectively, they, they're in that state of limbo until we take them out of the rocket. And the moment we do, well, you need to immediately get them fed, watered, bedded, all that stuff, just so that they like they get their morale back up and they don't instantly break. But for now, and let's see, see rocket list. Yeah, here we go. This guy, launch him towards there. Oh, yeah, the little green symbol. It has been, it has been a hot minute since I've done this stuff. Oh, yeah, launch rocket. Off you go. And it hangs for some reason. I think we've just hit a save point. Perfect. Right. And then for the petroleum rocket, we actually have a whole bunch of petroleum right here. I have almost managed to get rid of all the natural gas down here. All I had to do was to get some tiles, put some liquids in a few places, move things around, and now it's all nice and neat. Was it necessary? No. Did I do it anyway? Yes. Uh, I can't help myself. Uh, I just want to sort out those gases. There's too many random gases floating about the place. I think I, I think I might actually be better off just coring out the whole map. It's just people kind of sometimes don't like it when we core out the whole map, especially considering it's such a mixed bag of stuff. But mm, kind of do just want to rip it all apart and start from scratch. You know what I mean? Welcome home, you beautiful tall rocket. I think it's actually kind of huge now that I look at it. Mm, never mind. All home, and there goes all of our science. That's 320 data banks. Yeah, 320 data banks, uh, a bioluminescent rock, and we've got an archaic tech. This has plus 30 decor, archaic tech has plus 20. They're all actually pretty nice. All right, uh, we need to convert you. You are about to become a petroleum engine, petroleum engine rather quickly. First thing we do is we deconstruct the steam engine, deconstruct the research module. Well, actually, it's not quite the first thing we do. The first thing we do is take those data banks downstairs so that we can start researching them. And uh, someone should... Mike, you should be on top of that already. Because we need the petroleum engine, which we don't have just yet. Uh, the solid oxides are in a few things. I'm pretty sure we're going to want to put this there. You know what? Give me some ladders. Well, we're waiting for a researcher to get on with that. We might as well actually deconstruct this, deconstruct this. We'll just let all the steam out. And let's deconstruct all the background plating. In fact, all of this can go... And then we're going to let all the water into the back end of space, and... Great, I think we've contaminated the water splainer. Actually, that's not a problem. We can get rid of any contamina water contamination quite easily by just getting rid of the background plates. All that water can go into the background of space as well. To empty out this liquid loop, we're not even going to try and reclaim it. We're just going to dump it off. It's all gone into space. And then we can cut our way through here, and then re-empty. 
Perfect. Deconstruct all of these. We don't need any of these liquid pipes. And instead, we're going to put ourselves in... One steel liquid pump. Right about there. And give me a heavy up wire. Uh, actually, I'm doing this the wrong way. The liquid pump should probably go over here, closer to the wire. The wire is more expensive than running piping. And then we run piping from that over to the rocket. And then just a little bit of heavy up wire to make sure it's connected. Done, done, and... Done. Alright, uh, top layer. Yeah, we'll deconstruct those background tiles. Deconstruct all the background buildings and... Poof! Gets rid of all of that water. Just to make sure it doesn't get locked in with us. And where is that research? Is it almost done? Oh, come on! We have the best researcher in all of Christendom. Now, I was just wondering why Mike hadn't finished his research. He was taking a nap. I've also noticed blob of ice. Yeah, what happened here is this backed up. As in, this has been backed up for so long that the water has frozen in the pipe. I kind of anticipated this was going to happen, so I've recently turned off the sink, though I don't think it was in time. I'm going to turn off one sink, and that should mean that sh this third sink should get used occasionally when all three people go for bathroom breaks at the same time. However, that might be a while. But hey, it's down to, what? Minus 1.8? Ooh, maybe we should turn off a couple of them. You know what? No, it's fine. They'll, they'll either do it or they won't, and they'll come along to repair that p pipe in a bit. For now, though, right back up here, we finally got the research complete. So that means... Petroleum engine, thank you very much. Uh, we are going to need... Solid oxidizer tank? Actually, wait, liquid fuel tank and a solid oxidizer tank. Alright. This is the solid oxidizer tank. All we need is oxalite for it. Uh, good thing we have 195 tons of this stuff lying around. Uh, we are going to want, I think it's 135 kgs. Let me double check. Wait, 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 wait. According to the ancient texts, it's 422 kilos of petroleum and 422 kilos of liquid oxygen. No, 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 no. We want a solid oxidizer. Which, how do we change that? Ah, here we are. Oxalite, thank you very much. Oof. Now, if you want to go to the first ring, it's 306 kg. Second ring, 569. Actually, how far can we go with this? Uh... What's the max weight this thing can carry? We can't go past, we can't go out to 9,000. We can go out to 8,000, but it would require us to bring three fuel tanks. Ooh, that is a lot. I'm trying to remember what the strategy was before, but I think we'll go out to about 6,000. I think we'll go out to the 60,000 kilometer mark, checking all those planets. What we really want to get our hands on though is the niobium, which will give us uh, thermium, all we, basically once we get a small amount of that, we can grind that up to t turn all of our wolframite into thermium, which gives us high temperature material. And is it fullerene or is it isoresin? I'm pretty sure it's fullerene that gives us supercoolant. So supercoolant and thermium means we can start churning out a whole bunch of liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen. So I think, I think this is actually everything we need on the close planets. And then it's, it's basically a case of exploring all of these planets out, finding the ones that have the best, richest resources. And this is all sustainable resource harvesting. Like, that's the thing. All of this stuff regenerates. It, uh, it replenishes 55.6 kgs a cycle, this one. These closer ones, yeah, it's 55.6. 166.7 kgs a cycle. How much coal, diamond, and refined carbon do you want? It's actually pretty good. We're going to need a lot of coal because we're going to want to make a whole bunch of uh, ceramic. Oh, actually. kind of. We might want to make insulation, but insulation requires just... Oodles and oodles of reed fiber, and reed fiber requires so much polluted water. Drecos, that was it. Yeah, we were going to make Drecos anyway, so we make a Dreco farm, or Dreco, a few Dreco ranches to get ourselves a whole bunch of reed fiber. Hmm. You know what? Let's just troll to get this, this together real quick. One thing is, you cannot refuel this oxidizer unless you have a gantry in place, and I'm still not bothering to power this. How much does this cost to power? It's like 1,200. Yeah, it's 1,200 watts. I mean, it only flickers on occasionally, but that's just... No, I'm not wasting that much money. Or, that much resources, I should say. Over here, what do we got? Yeah, 569 kgs. Uh, we want to limit this tank to 569 kgs as well. That's the thing. You have to limit the liquid fuel tank to the same as the solid oxidizer. It burns a one-to-one -one ratio. And unless you've got that uh, that calculator ancient text thing, you're not going to know what numbers to put in here. You're basically going to be filling it full of resources. Or fuel and oxidizer. But the thing is, then you burn more. The extra waste, like there's a whole thing of... 
the more weight you have in a rocket, the more fuel it takes to get you there. So if we were to launch this full of fuel, we would actually burn more than the 569 kilos. We'd probably burn 600 and something kilos because we're carrying the extra fuel and oxidizer as we go with it. So you're better off just limiting it. I don't know if it, eh, Yeah, we could play around with it, but uh, not worth it. Okay, you, go away. And you, we're about to launch you off to your next destination. This place actually stocks smooth hatches, which is very nice. Solid methane, solid carbon dioxide, crude oil, petroleum. I mean, yeah, why not? I just realized I haven't deleted that uh, gantry yet. And why are you not moving? And we have liftoff with the petroleum engine. Petroleum engine gives off carbon dioxide. The steam one just gives off steam. <sighs> All right. Now, what side projects did I want to take care of? One thing is, I'm pretty sure these meteor showers are dropping these bonbon trees. They're dropping the seeds for them, and they're basically taking up residence in new locations because there is a whole bunch of trees here that were not there beforehand. Like that one there, uh, that one there, these two over here. Like, I would have plugged into them already. At the same time, the slow and steady approach seems to be working with these. We've got one, two, three, four, five. We have five liquid reservoirs just full of nectar. This gives me a lot of hope for the future. The next thing we're going to do is get our hands on solid cargo bays. The reason for the solid cargo bays, then when we go out to these locations, we can bring ourselves back some of those tasty, tasty resources that we want so much. The, uh, the basically the niobium, the fullerene, and maybe some isoresin as well. Though I think the, uh, the insulated tiles or the insulation might be a little bit long term. Ooh. And uh, some of these drecos. I basically dumped them in here to keep them warm so that they don't die off. I was worried, like, I, I looked down and at some point there was a whole bunch of Drekos either down here or in these rooms, and I'm like, they're going to freeze to death. In fact, I'm pretty sure some of them did freeze to death, which is why we've got so much barbecue in storage. After we take care of the Drekko ranches, or maybe before, I want to unclog the geothermal vent down here. If we can unclog this geothermal vent, then what we can do is we can, well, strap five more steam turbines on top of that, and that's pretty much power sorted reliably. It's just right now, I always know at some point I'm going to have to bump pump a bunch of mercury in here and the mercury we're gonna have to heat it up to a certain temperature and that means we're gonna be low on power for a while so to counteract that we have been stockpiling a bunch of ethanol so all we'll do is we'll hook up three or four pa uh, petroleum generators and we'll use those petroleum generators to generate energy while we're working at unclogging this vent though so, oh and we're also going to pump all of the crude oil out of here yeah we'll get all this crude oil we'll move it over there and then we can dig in from this side uh, it's going to be, no, there will be some movement required, but unclogging this, putting in a Draco farm, and then I think I kind of just want to demolish the map. There's too much stuff everywhere, and I just want to get rid of a lot of it. And our gold volcano timbers are working just fine. That's at 97 degrees, and we've got 14 tons there. This one's at, what, 98.8? Still going strong, though, and we've got 12.1 tons there. We're absolutely swimming in gold, which is good. You need that for super coolant. Anyway, I'm going to cut this out here for the moment. I uh, hope you enjoyed. Good luck.